Hey everyone, welcome to the Inside Scoop. I'm Kara Suboy, CNET.com. Joining me is senior writer Stephen Shanklin. Hey, joining Hi. us, Stephen. Thanks Today so we're, we're talking about Moore's Law. Why don't you very quickly give our viewers a quick description of who uh, Gordon Moore was and his law that he created several decades ago? Sure. Gordon Moore uh, is a co-founder of Intel and one of the pioneers of the development of computer chips, microprocessors. And in 1965, he wrote a paper that's now famous uh, where he described Moore's Law for the first time, although he didn't call it that. And in that first paper, he observed that the number of transistors on a chip, that's the number of little tiny electronic circuitry components, is doubling every year. And in 1975, he came back and revised that view. He figured out that that's actually, no, actually every two years. And it's a, a law that actually proved remarkably prescient. Uh, the industry has stuck to it ever since. That's why we have ever more uh, you know, transistors on a chip, and that's why computer processors can do more and more. What used to fit on a mainframe now fits on a PC and fits on a smartphone. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's basically the, the march of progress rule for the computer industry. Exactly. That's the reason I can have a very sophisticated smartphone in my pocket today. But what exactly. are some of the problems facing Moore's Law? I mean, can this really continue and keep up? Well, it's, to be clear, it's had problems just about every year since its existence, uh, and yet the industry just keeps on going, clearing hurdle after hurdle. So it's, uh, there are plenty more hurdles to come. Uh, looks like we have you know, at least a, a decade left in the current technology, and that uses silicon for a very important part of the transistor. What happens after silicon runs out of steam is kind of wide open right now, and there are a lot of options out there. And I think what's most interesting is there is a huge industry that is just maniacally focused on making sure computing progress continues, even if Moore's Law, precisely defined, doesn't continue. What are some of the solutions that they're coming up with? Like, are they completely rethinking materials or rethinking construction? Like, how are they going to do that? Well, currently, the leading contenders use the same basic structure for transistors as we have today. But one of the most interesting ones is a material called graphene. So you'd leave a lot of the transistor the same, but for one little silicon channel, you could replace that with a little piece of a substance called graphene. That's a sheet of carbon atoms. It looks like chicken wire, little hexagons all stuck together. And under the right circumstances, graphene is a semiconductor, which means that it can transmit electricity or not, depending on the situation. That's the key thing that you need to have happen in order to make a microprocessor. So that's, I think, one of the most interesting possibilities, but there are a lot of challenges in getting that to work and getting to the point where anybody can actually manufacture a chip economically. So what happens if the chip industry runs out of steam and can't keep up? That's a very interesting question. Uh, right now, most of the people I talk to are not panicking by any means that that, that that might happen. But you have to ask yourself what would happen. And the most likely situation is not that there's some big cataclysmic moment where the industry falls off a cliff, but more, more as if a, a, a gradual tapering down or fizzling. There would be a lot of warning in advance if, things, if the train was going off the rails. So it wouldn't be a sudden thing. And there would be a lot of things that the industry could do to help pick up the slack. Improvements in software, improvements in how the processors actually work, and lots of other things. So I, I think that if it did happen, uh, it would probably be a gradual transition. And when it was over, there would still be a lot of innovation. I think a good uh, example would be the, the automotive industry. You know, internal combustion engines haven't changed profoundly in decades. You know, you get extra things. You get anti-lock brakes. You get... Uh, you know, fuel injection and you get maybe electric vehicles are radical changes. But, you know, for the most part, that's a mature industry. It doesn't change very much, but it's still a very big and very important and uh, very lively industry. Fascinating. Well, as Moore's Law, I guess, reaches its 50th anniversary in a few years, we'll definitely uh, be all watching with interest to see if the industry can indeed keep up. Thank you so much, yeah. Stephen. I'm Cara Suboy, and you've been watching The Inside Scoop. Yeah.